Namaste everyone, this is Ambi. Today we will talk about another PowerShell topic that will be hash table. So once Bill Gates was smoking hashish and um, he was sitting on a table and then he came up with the name hash table. Well, that is not actually, <laughs> that is not actually how it, how it is or how it was. The hash table is where you store data. Imagine if you are from Python background, imagine it as uh, like a dictionary, right? You have a key, you have a value. L let us do what we, what we usually do, that is open up a command prompt and do stuff and see what a hash table is. I have realized that when you open Visual Studio and the PowerShell 6, which you have embedded with Visual Studio, you will have uh, some output mismatch in the Visual Studio. So I'm gonna stick with this PowerShell 6 itself. Let us define a hash table. This is empty hash table. Is there a length to it? Yes. Is there a count to it? Zero. Okay. Then I should get type hash table. Let us define another one. Hash. I will say int is one string. Oops. Int is one string is my name. And if I type this, you will see name and value. You, I usually do this way. Um, what did I do? Okay. Well, when I'm defining a hash table, I usually do like this. Let's say first equals ambi and last equals last is g. Close up and then that is because it gives a linearity. I mean, you can type one below the other. Always the a last one, you don't have to put this semicolon there. You can leave that without the semicolon. Now let us look at another hash table. Hash at, I'm gonna hit enter, one is one. Two is two. I will define three. Um, three is three, and nine is nine. Four is four. So what I will do here is hash and it does print it and then I will define, let's say you want to uh, change the values in it. So hash then you select the key value. That is, let's say I wanna change one is equal to A. I will do it like this. Hmm. Oops, okay, I, I put a dot here. Now, the value of one is A. 
Now you might be wondering what happened. Well, uh, I wanted to set the value of 1a and here 1, 1. Well, when I was defining a hash table here, whereas yes, it was one number, not uh, one as the integer. It's not in quotations. That means it was an integer. And here I'm adding, I'm trying to update the value of a string one. It's in quotations. So it will add another key value pair. This is int, this is string. So let us do that again. And I will do one. Okay, so we have now two values for one. Here the key value one is integer, here the key value one is a string. Let's say I want to uh, remove uh, the string value one. Okay, so what I will do here is I will say one I still have our original four members. So I are we looked at adding a new value or updating an, an existing key value. This was method one. Let us look at method two, hash dot add. Then you say, I'll say seven comma I. You have seven here. The value is i. Let us look at method three. Hash is hash plus that symbol. This is method three of updating or adding a value. As you can notice here that you can add two hash tables into one. Let us go for method four of updating a hash table. Two is not there. Okay, B. This is another method. This is actually a short form of the previous one that is method three. Let me throw a puzzle here. Ash plus equals at. Let us say you want to access a value here okay and um, you want to see what value it has uh, you can let's say first add this value here keys is the name of the key values is the value as you can see it, it says keys and then value then let me, uh, let's say you want to remove a key here, uh, that is the keys, hash dot remove keys. Well, before that, let me show you hash, how to access all the keys, okay. Here, if you do that, what happens is uh, it shows just the keys because keys is a keyword to access all the keys. But here you have 
the name itself has a key. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Hash dot one is hash dot two is it gives so hash dot are the hash tables name dot whatever the name of the key that I give here, you will you can access that value. This is one method of access accessing the value. Another way is you can put it like this. Okay, this is another way of accessing it. However, if I want to access all of them, all the keys, what if I do this? No, that is wrong. So I have to remove that conflicting key. Well, what if you, what if there is, is there another way of accessing all that key? Yes, bspace dot keys. So hash dot bs base dot keys will give you all the keys. In case if there is a key called keys, or the for in the first column you have the name of the keys as keys itself. And then let me remove now. So when I do this, you get this. But if I do remove the keys and then I type hash, that is gone. Now if I do hash dot keys, it gives me all the items in the hash table. So we already saw that we can do this items and check the length length and count are not the same. Then you can check whether it's fixed is fixed size. Yes. No, no, it is not because we are adding and removing items to it. Definitely not and perform other boolean options like this contains one yes it does contain one here so that is true we can also do this uh well let us um let me open a calculator here okay so i will tell you why open a notepad too minimize them and then say get process so it shows up all the processes here mm, let me see calculator is here do we have a notepad here yes so uh, just uh, do how I do we will cover all these later but for now let's do this say we are creating a, va a variable called PowerShell PS underscore CalC that stands for, uh, instead of saying PowerShell underscore calculator, I am saying PS underscore CalC, short name. Equals get process calculator, right? So if I say, oops, it's underscore. Okay, so that is the process. It has stored all the information about that, about the running process called calculator. Let us do the same for notepad. And I am going to call this NP. Now I will create a new hash table. Procs are processes. And this is named empty now. What I will do here is I will say calculator equals ps underscore calci. Okay, uh, let me add this and then notepad equals ps underscore np. So let me write. So that is what we have. We created a hash table of two processes. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say procs.calculator. So it is giving me that information. 
props dot notepad it is giving giving me that information let's say you want to sort them right then what you do is hash dot get enumerator okay i didn't want to do it on the that one but okay enumerator then i will say sort hyphen property key it sorted the hash table here based on keys what if i want to sort them based on value can it happen did it happen a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t yes it did happen so this is how you deal with the hash tables later we will work more with hash tables and how to use them in loops how to use them to make decisions store information access information it is basically like a small database that you create think of it as a tiny uh, an excel programmable excel small one, tiny one i mean you can go as big as you want but for our general purpose these will be useful so thank you for tuning in have a great one